Hey, you know, if I keep getting the same question over and over again, I realize, hey, I didn't make a video about that. Usually, it's someone saying, why don't you make a video about so-and-so? It's like, yeah, well, I've already made that video like 10 times. But one um, video that I had not made is people keep asking me about the uh, top-ranked best Fujifilm X-mount lenses for black and white photography. And everything, of course, is about image fidelity. That inner tonal gain, incorrectly called micro-contrast, which is a horrible word, it's image fidelity. And by the way, before mentioning these top five Fujifilm lenses best for black and white photography, it is extremely important to say that the reason why, and nobody can articulate it, I guarantee you won't find anybody that articulates it. Nobody. It's like, it's a speed light. It doesn't matter if it's a, a huge studio strobe like this one that you can't see right off camera, or a speed light. They're all the same thing. They're xenon tubes, yes? And what they do is they cause an enormous burst of light in an incredibly short period of time. People say, oh my god, that image pops. It's flash photography. It doesn't have to be flash photography. A lot of people say uh, an incredible high image fidelity, like $30,000 Leica lens or something. Man, that image pops. The reason why images pop, by the way, on a Leica, some of their lenses and their cameras, is their cameras have weak color filter arrays, which means it lets in more light and has better image fidelity. But there's a reason why uh, flash images pop. People say, wow, man, that was just so rich. Obviously, that's a flash shot. It's like, oh, yeah, but why is a, a flash photo so much better? It's all about image saturation, yeah? You can saturate the colors and the tonality of the composition of your shot so much better, so much flat, faster with flash photography. And this will overcome the deficiencies of like a high element count zoom lens. So which will have better image fidelity? A uh, same image taken with ambient light and uh, exposed to the right or ETTR at what, what I've called accurately sensor saturation or like a, a kind of crappy zoom lens that has 30 elements in it with a speed light. And in that example, the uh, zoom image with the flash photography will have better image fidelity than the uh, low element count in most cases. A prime lens that uh, looks really great, great with ambient lighting. So just remember that flash photography overcomes high element count. Okay, it's not my opinion. That's a fact, and that's regardless of system, whether it be Canon or Fujifilm. Anyway, top five lenses for black and white photography with ambient lighting, all things being equal, given sensor saturation, in no particular order, is the 50 millimeter f2. Yeah, 50 millimeter f2. The 80 millimeter macro, hmm? the 90 millimeter, yes, 90 millimeter prime, the 56 millimeter f1.2, yeah. That's the non-APD version, by the way. I have the APD version. And the 16 uh, millimeter f1.4. So 50, 80, 90, 56, and 16 millimeter f1.4. Those are the top lenses for ambient sensor saturation for best image fidelity on Fujifilm X-mount. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a happy holidays. Yeah. And... Uh, now Fujifilm beats Nikon in a certain arena because Fujifilm's uh, top cameras, their GFX and sometimes occasionally their X-mount lenses are made in Japan, assembled in Japan, but uh, no more Nikons like that. Nikon has uh, now ended production of cameras in their two factories, Sendai and what's the other one in Japan. They're falling on hard financial times. That's been breaking news the past 48 hours. However, I knew about that like a month and a half ago and I told people about it. So, thanks so much for watching and happy holidays. Wait for it. Fujifilm.